Welcome to another tutorial by Tech and Web Guy. We're going to look at WPKG and creating custom packages. I'm going to start by looking at a package.xml folder that I've already worked with. So I'm going to edit it with Notepad++ because as you can see it makes editing it much easier. We have several different types of package installs here. I've also organized mine a little bit differently so I can minimize them through the Notepad++ interface. So let's take a look at the different type of packages we can install with WPKG. I have one that sets the time so you can actually run specific commands through it. You can run Windows updates or software updates through it. You can run VB scripts or bat files. You can install exe files like flash or you can do simple ones like an MSI or you can do like I said bat files so I have we're gonna go through each one of these and take a look let's start from the beginning we have the packages and under packages we have IDs name revision reboot priority notification executes what these mean is that ID is the ID that corresponds and the profile ID these have to match the name is really for you to know what it does. The revision is to know how many times you've changed it. The revision is important because if you, for example, if I change this to revision 2, if this was on a execute once and the revision was 1, if I changed it to 2, it would run it again. It knows what revision it's run and will run it again if it sees an updated revision if it only runs once. Reboot equals false. Priority. These priorities are a custom set priority that you can change to whatever number you'd like. This can be a million, it can be 10. It's really based on the other priority codes that you have. So I have several here. So the one that's going to run first for me is this bat file down here. So these priority numbers are relative to what priority numbers you're using inside of your packages.xml. There's a notify and then an execute. Execute can be always or once, meaning do you need this to install once or is it something that you need to execute continually? So now that we've talked about packages, there's several types of things we're going to look at. Installs. If you just have something that installs when it sets the time, you just want it to run every time it turns on, this is a good bet for you. Just need the install and then the command. If you're looking for something that installs once um, an update. This is um, a fix for the 2007 Office update for the spell checker. As we start looking at running them on MSI files and EXEs and different type of installations, you're going to see that they all take different switches. These these are called switches. They run after the file and they tell the file how to run. I'm going to show you how to check and see what these are. I would love to tell you that each file type has its own type but it's really up to the programmer who's making the program to decide how they want to do it themselves so who knows <laughs> from app to app how it works but I will show you how I do it. M moving down we have an install for a, for a VBS script. I just simply make sure I have the C script.exe first. I point to the VBS and it runs it. If you were to have any switches after the VBS script you could put them right there. Let's skip down and look at Shockwave. Shockwave um, is an MSI, so it uses the MSI EXEC command. Um, it's going to install the forward slash I. I have it pointing to the path, and then I have here the switch that makes it install quietly. Again, I'll show you how I get that. But let's look. There's a lot more that we can do than just installs. If you need to check, for example, my flash here does a check. So what does the check do? The check with this type is tech checking the file that the version is greater or equal to it points to the path of the file to check and it tells the value so now this is where it can be kind of tricky what it's going to do is it's going to look at this value if it returns true it will not run let me say that again if this check or any of the checks that you do return true they won't run because if it equals version 10.3.8.3.7 or higher it's not going to run because that's the version we're installing we only want to install it if it's not true 
these checks, which you can do file checks, you can do registry checks. Um, here I have a check to see if file exists, but you can do a check to see if a file exists in an uninstall. So I went ahead and found found one. It, it's called LabSim. Um, it's a program we use here at the high school. But the check type is an uninstall, and I check to see if it exists. And the path is called LabSim. So let's get into the into the big guy here, the Flash. Now you can make these as complicated or as simple as possible, but this one does a check to the files equal to or greater than this file. Great. So it checks that file version. Um, let's go ahead and look at that file to see how it's checking. So here I have the path that it spelled out here for the check file. My system root, system32, macro, med, flash. And then it's looking at this file, flash 10w.ocx. Now I've, this is a newer version, I have 11. So I'd have to make sure that this version equals. Now flash is kind of tricky about this, so you have to make sure that you know exactly which file you're checking. So right now, if this check ran, it would come back false because this file doesn't exist. How it checks if that's the correct file is it goes to property, it looks at the details, and it checks the, ver the file version number. So that's how it knows, and that's how you can check to see what it's going to say. So I'm going to exit out of that. And then I have several installs, some upgrades and removes. The install is what the action it's going to take if it's the first time it's running. The upgrade is what it's going to do if it needs to upgrade. And then the remove, the remove is an interesting one because what the remove does is if you ever remove this package ID from a profile and it has the remove command, it'll run that command because it keeps a local file. It keeps a file in the C drive Windows System 32 called WPKG and I'm just going to bring it up here and I'm going to edit it. So this is the local file WPKG.XML that exists in this location under your System 32 file and it holds a record of everything that's been run. So it'll use this file to compare so if it if it removes it, it knows how to remove something. Um, this is Ultra VNC. It knows how to remove Ultra VNC because it exists locally. Once it executes a program, it then adds it to this XML file. So this is how it checks and knows. So if I removed, if I was to run, if I had Flash in here and I was to run it again with Flash gone, it would see Flash doesn't exist, but it has the package ID here locally. So it would then uninstall the package if it has that remove tag. Now this is also this file, if you're having problems with the computer, removing this file is how you would clean up that WPKG installation off that computer. So by simply deleting this file, I would remove any instance that it had if I was having problems. The more complicated your libraries get, the more of a problem you can have if you start using WPKG and you've moved things from profile to profile, these can get pretty convoluted um, and it could get pretty complicated. So in worst case scenario, you can always remove this file. So going back to the file here, so we have installs, upgrades, and remove. So looking at the installs, this install is a little different because it's actually running the uninstall first. And it has a switch here called dash uninstall, which you can get off the Adobe website. They frequently change these, Adobe does. It used to be for dash u, and the install used to be dash i, but they've since changed it now to the full name. So um, these exit codes are looking for exit codes, and it helps it how it runs. This is a little bit more advanced than I'm going to talk about right now, but you can find more on WPKG's website. The next thing we install after we uninstall the flash is we do a task kill, we force it, and we're doing explore.exe. So we can kill tasks before we run because we can't install flash if an Internet Explorer is running. So that's what we're doing. Now this one only works for Internet Explorer. If you have Mozilla or Chrome, you'd have to install it a little bit differently. But what it does is it's going to install flash based on my domain software, my, my flash installer and there's my install command. So those are the three things that it's doing to install. It moves flash, it kills IE, and then it installs. And it has my switch, and I also use some exit codes here. There are different ways to do checks. Let's go to the WPKG website here real fast and look. 
So if we go to the WPKG website, um, under the documentation, tips and troubleshooting, we should have the, here we go, the packages.xml file. And this tells us how to manage our WPKG. So it's, uh, it talks about the ID, the name, the revision, it talks about the reboot, the priority, things we've already talked about. And now here's the different type of checks. You can do a registry check, a file check, an uninstall check. An execute check will execute a script and checks the returning error level. So this is a good way if you need a script to check for errors. And then a, log a logical check. We didn't talk about logical checks, but let's scroll down and just look at a logical condition. You can use multiple checks to say if Okay, this is a logical check or, so if either one of these come back true. So if you had multiple versions of Flash and you needed to check, this is how you could do it. So this website will give you all the information you need to know any specifically. Um, for example, in the uninstall, you can do versions smaller than, smaller than or equal to, versions equal to. So there's a whole bunch of information on this website. So I'm going to back out of it. And the next thing I want to talk about is, so if you don't want to have to create packages and you want to do things that are already made on the WPKG website, the silent installers has a list of software. Now there's some things here, some subcategories that you can look at, or if you want to look at, um, or if you want to look at changing window settings, you can. We'll look at that here in a second. But here's a list of all the packages that they've built that you can install. And I'm going to look at, for example, Audacity. Here's, remember I said that I like to put mine, I don't like to put mine like this. It takes up more room. I like to stagger mine across the screen. Here's what it does. It does a check to uninstall exists for Audacity. It's got that version number. If it's correct, it installs the software. Audacity, there it goes silent and no restart and if it removes it it does that so this is um, a great way to install audacity usually here they also have the download page so if I went to look at flash you're gonna see flash is a little bit different here than what I showed you because I rewrote mine but here's the flash it does lots of checks this is a very um, advanced one it also has Firefox and other browsers, how to do plugins for that. It also has 32 bit versus 64. So you can get really involved in how you build these and how this is going to work. It's up to you. I try to keep it simple. If I need something and it already exists on the website, I will usually just uh, copy it over and use it the best I can. They have lots of programs. If we go to the next 200 set, you can kind of see when I first started there were only two pages of programs um, and it was more like a page and a half and now they're up about three pages so shockwave player um, lots of different programs um, if you build a program and you want to put it in here you're more than happy to uh, contribute to their wiki and add programs uh, there's ultra vnc one of the ones that i use um, there's all sorts of wpkg packages in here i use one for example, the change settings. Here's a list of settings you can change. I use the resolution changer um, for my testing. They have to be a specific screen resolution, so you can use that to make sure that nobody's running at 800 by 600 resolution. You can use fonts, daylight saving times, all sorts of automatic updates, all sorts of different things you can do specifically for window settings. So this is kind of my overview. Um, the last thing we're going to talk about is how do I know which switches to use? Um, I know this has been a pretty long conversation already, but I use this guy right here. And once you've opened the Universal Silent Switch Finder, how it works is you'll browse for a file. Once you do it, you're going to browse for a file. And I'm going to find the Notepad++. It loads and then it tells you the location, the type of package, and then the silent installer after that it accepts. So it does a forward slash s to install Notepad++ silently. So we'll look at the other ones. I also have Shockwave. So there, so here's Shockwave. You need the MSI exec.exe, the forward slash i, and then the path, and then the QB. So there you go. Now sometimes they can put in notes, but there's no notes on this one. So the last one I'm going to look at is Flash. The Flash is 64-bit. Okay, this program you selected is, an, is a valid PE file, but doesn't have any information. So this happens every once in a while, and the best way is to go ahead and play with some switches, uh, forward slash s dash s, 
for dash silent, forward slash silent, um, or Q or QN or quiet. Those are the different kind of switches that you can use to play around to see which one's going to work best for it. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, tutorial with Tech and Web Guy. If you have any questions, please comment them on my site. Thanks.